In this video, we're going to cover everything you need to know about Transport Fever 2 from a beginner's perspective. We're going to explain lots of tips in a very easy fashion. First of all, I'd like to say to you, welcome to our community and it's really great to have you here. Let's get started by talking about the main menu. So you're going to have these options on the side of the screen. Campaign, free game, load game, map editor, settings, credits and exit. Obviously we know what exit means. Both free game and campaign are very similar. The only difference is free game is like a sandbox and campaign will teach you about the concepts that you can actually use in the sandbox mode. But we're gonna start today with free game. By pressing this, you can then choose three different types of maps, temperate, dry, or tropical. My personal favorite is tropical because it adds an extra layer of challenge. But if you're a beginner, I would recommend temperate. You can then go down and choose the size of the map, the map format, which is basically how long the map is. And you can choose how many towns and how many industries relative to the map size. Then on the seed you can press X to change it to a random seed generator and then when you're happy with one that you like you can select how hilly you want it so if you want some mountains make it the max if you want it to be flat make it the least. Water is the same thing if you want a lot of water on your map for boats then put it high if you don't want any then put it low and forest is basically how many trees are going to be in the way but I would recommend if you're new to put all of these right in the center. Press A to go to the next page and then you can choose the vehicle type. So you can choose European, American or Asian types of vehicles and I'll show you a little secret here as well to get all of them at the same time. You can also choose the start year. Easy is not really that fun because it's that easy but medium adds a little bit of a challenge but not too much where you're going to be completely losing out if you're new. Next is towns cargo needs. You can choose basically how many products you need to deliver to each city. So I would recommend that you go to two if you're starting out because it is very easy and this can also be changed later on in the game if you want to add more. The industry closure frequency if you're new I would recommend that you turn this off because it just adds an extra layer of difficulty to the game which you don't need to start out with but you can experiment if you'd like. Then the industry density target, if this is set to off, it doesn't matter, but if it sets it on, then basically how many industries you want to have in the map. In terms of if industries close, what's the lowest you'll go? So here's a little secret. If you go down to enable custom settings, turn this on, you can then press the three dashes button to go to custom settings. You can then press RB to go to advanced settings, which allows you to choose specific things. For example, we've already generated our map type, which is temperate, so it's flat with rivers but we can actually change the climate to something else like tropical so you would have beaches and stuff along the riverbanks but we're gonna leave it on temperate just for now then on vehicles I would recommend that you choose all vehicles but you're welcome to change the different types of vehicles maybe you want American trains on a European map I don't know but I recommend all if we press LB which is one to the left you can now choose urban games custom content you can see that we have the sandbox mode deluxe content vehicles no engineer and early supporter content enabled and these all come with urban games apart from early supporter and deluxe content which are DLCs that I have. I'd recommend for a first playthrough you don't turn a sandbox on so we'll just disable that but I would recommend on your second playthrough you do turn that on. I would turn vehicles no engineer off for your first playthrough as well but once again I would recommend turning it back on for your second playthrough. Once you're ready press X to apply. I've left the DLCs on but I've turned everything else off and then you can press a to start. And now we're in the game. We can use the rightmost stick to look around, going up and down and side to side. And we can use the leftmost stick to move around within the map. So let's find a good starting point. You want to look for an industry that's very close to the end product. For example, Badalona wants bricks. And next door to that is a bricks factory. And then that requires stone. And next door to that is a stone mine. We can go across here to, first of all, the road tool. We'll get to stuff later on like trains and boats, but roads are the first thing we're gonna do because they are the easiest thing. So then press RB to go one to the right, and we're going to select a truck station. Now use RT and LB on the back of the controller to zoom in and out. And we wanna go fairly close in to actually get in range of this industry. Now press on the arrow keys on the left of the controller to rotate the industry, as well as bringing it up and down. In this instance, we want to go as close as possible to the town with a truck stop because that will save on distance that the vehicle's got to travel in. So we'll make sure it's connected to the road and we're going to move the truck stop over here until this industry no longer glows white. And then we're going to go just back into the range and then we're going to place it down. Then on this brick factory, place this down right outside because remember, there's no bias on this side. We don't have to be closer to one side or the other because we've got trucks coming in over this way and we've also got trucks going out over this way. So there's no rush on either side. Now we're going to do something a little bit slightly different. We'll go to Badal go to your city, open the road tool, and then go one to the right to select a truck unload stop. We're going to do this because it's a very simple setup, 
we don't actually need a lot of stuff going on so we're just going to have an unload only option to do this we're going to go down into the city and when you press on this truck stop and get it equipped it will actually display which part of the city requires which resource so on this side is wanting bricks so we're going to go down to this side of the city place it down and press b to back out then go over to the line manager tool and press new line and we're going to zoom all the way out and then start our way over at this stone quarry press a to select then go to the next station press a again and it will create a route so now we can actually send trucks to this construction materials plant let's back out of this and buy some to do this go over to the road menu then find buildings and go to the road depot select this and place this down wherever you like on the route then on the main screen press b to close the menu and press a on the road depot now press X to buy some vehicles and you're going to look for the one that can haul your cargo. It's a very easy mistake here so pay attention. If I select this vehicle for example, on the right side it says what cargo it can carry. Now we're looking for stone here which this one can't carry but this one above can so we're going to buy this one. We're going to buy about 5 of these just to start and all of these are going to go on the line which is RB, the arrow, set line and then line 1. Now you can see these trucks are leaving the depot. These trucks are just pulling in now and they're going to pick up this stone. So while that's happening, we can start construction on the next part of the route. We can now go to the line manager tool once again, press X for a new line and then click on this same truck stop that we're dropping off at. Zoom out and go to the town now, select the unload stop and then go back over to our depot, press X to buy vehicles and we're going to find one that can carry bricks this time. And we're then going to put this onto line 2 which is our new line. Now this truck's taking some bricks over to the city but there's not that many on board. We're going to have to fix this. Go back over here and select the line manager. Then press A on the line you want to select. And then select the station which is picking up from. For example Badalona South. Then go over here to this fill tool. It says load if available currently so if a truck pulls in that means it's going to take whatever's there and just go. We're going to change that by pressing A and then two to the right and make that full load. So a truck will now wait until the whole thing is full before leaving the station. I hope you're getting the hang of it by now. So I'm gonna quickly go ahead and make a few more of these routes and then we'll transition to some more beefy vehicles. All right, so I've set most of these industries up now and they're all connected pretty much to the network. However, this industry right here that's making refined fuel is not connected anywhere else, but we can't do it with trucks because Sierra, the city that wants this, is all the way over here and it's way too far to go. So what we'll do is instead go to the rail section of the menu. By opening this and then going one to the right to buildings you can select a cargo terminus station or a cargo station. In this instance we want a cargo terminus station although you could use a cargo station here too. We're going to place down the station and try and stick to the terrain as much as possible. You can see that at the front now we're digging into the terrain quite a lot and that's going to cost a lot of money. Here is much better. Let's place that down. And now we need a station over at the other place so we're going to go all the way over to Sierra and we're going to place down a station over here. Make sure the station is covering the part of the town that wants the cargo so place it nearby the industrial zone in this case. Then go one to the right and select tracks and we're going to connect both sides up. Pro tip, if this isn't a cross country slash bullet train line, make the tracks in small sections so that you save money on construction as the track can follow the terrain more. If you get an arrow while building a bridge, simply press the up arrow key and then you can make the bridge taller. Awesome, now we've got that going we can get some trains on the line. So we can press B and then go to buildings and the train depot and place this down nearby the tracks. Go to tracks and then connect this track up to the line we just established. And now press B to close the menu, press A on the depot like we did with the truck depot and then buy some vehicles. So let's choose some freight vehicles. In this instance we're going a medium distance so we want something with decent acceleration and decent top speed but neither end of the spectrum should be too much. We shouldn't have too high top speed or too low top speed and we have to make sure that it's got lots of tractive effort and lots of pulling power. This one for example would be a bad idea because it's got a really high top speed and a really high power which is great but then you compare it to the Russian class above and it's almost half the price and you're getting pretty much the same performance out of it on this sort of line because this train is meant for our long distance travel where this one is meant for medium. Let's press A to add this one. Now press Y and change the cargo type to which line you're doing. In this case it's fuel. Then press B to close the sort menu and you can now select a type of fuel container that you want to carry. You can do it based on capacity but also make sure that the top speed of the train is relatively the same as your top speed of your locomotive. So these ones will be good because they're fairly cheap but they don't quite have the maximum top speed that I'm looking for. So I'm going to go with this one instead which is a little bit more expensive but it can go a bit faster so maybe we can make some more money. 
So I can go to add a few of these, but you'll notice that the buy option is greyed out and that's because we don't have enough money. And for this reason, it's why you can't start with massive trains like this. So we'll press LB to close this menu and we're gonna go with something that isn't the most efficient we can make it, but it actually is something we can afford and it'll make a little bit of money so we can buy the trains like the one we just established. So press Y and then go back to any cargo type and we're gonna go for a cheaper train this time. The BRV here is quite cheap. The EMD GP9 is quite cheap. Basically, small shunting trains is what we're looking for to establish a foothold in the rail industry. The VRV is almost half price of the EMD. We're gonna buy this one and there's barely any difference there. Now press Y and then go back to the oil option and we're gonna select some of these. This time we can actually afford to go a bit cheaper. So we're gonna go instead with some of these tank cars. Once you're happy with the consistent in the bottom left, press X to purchase and then B to close the menu. You can now press B to close down the depot menu and go to line manager. Press X for a new line and we're gonna select both stations just like we did with the trucks. Now close down the menu and then go into the depot once again. Press on RB, set line and then the line should pop up. We can now see our train rolling out of the depot and that's gonna go pick up some stuff. A pro tip is to make sure that the depot is facing the first stop on your route so it can pick up the resources first and we're not wasting any time. I've done the opposite here. So instead we can go and find the train, press A on it and then go across here to reverse. And now the train's going this way, it can save a little bit of money as it doesn't have to travel all the way over to the other end of the line and then travel all the way back with nothing on board. Sidges and Barcelona are both cities located on a river, so we can exploit the river to transport people down it. Go over to the ship tool, select a passenger harbour, spin it round and then put it on the bank of the city. Obviously do this for both cities. And now once again, go to a line manager, new line, and then add both places. But hang on a second, we've got a problem here. We could not connect all stations. Well, let's find out what's going on there by holding Y and going to the data layers tool. Then go down one to the navigatable waters and we can now see where the ship is able to drive. Let's follow the route along and see what's going on. Okay, we need to increase the height of this bridge so a ship can fit underneath. Let's close down the data layers menu and we're gonna destroy this track and just make it a bit taller so the ships can fit underneath. There's lots of pillars on this bridge which isn't useful if we're going over water. So we're gonna press A and then press X to select the bridge type. And now we're gonna choose something with less pillars. I like this one, let's choose this one. But you're now flatten off the top piece of this bridge and bring it back down on the other side. Now we can go back to our data layers and then our navigatable waters and the ships can now fit underneath. So let's buy some. Go to the ship tab, then to a shipyard slash depot and we're gonna place that down and then buy some ships. You can buy loads of ships, but let's buy a hovercraft because let's be honest, it's pretty cool. Then assign this to the line and off they go. Now let's check back up on our train and see how that's going on. As this is, I guess, our biggest asset. So we have to make sure we're saving money and making sure that it's making money for us. Now this train has just left the pickup station, but it only has half the capacity on board. 43 out of a possible 90 fuel pieces. So this obviously isn't working. We can go over to the vehicle manager and then press RB and then the little spanner, edit selected vehicle. We can then remove some of these train cars and then press X to modify and this will remove the cars off the train and make sure that we're not carrying dead weight on the train. And now that means we're turning a profit. Now let's check up on the boats as these are also big assets. These are making a pretty big loss for us, about 200,000 each boat, and they've only got about half capacity. So instead, if we go to the line manager, let's sell one of these boats so we can have a full one instead. Okay, now pretty much all of these industries are hooked up, aside from one over here. This is the steelworks, and there's nowhere this steel is going. However, all the way over here, steel is wanted at this goods factory. A train could do this, but it is quite far to go for it. So what we'll do just to show it off is we'll use a plane instead. So go to the air option and then select a cargo airfield or a cargo airport. I'm gonna go with the cargo airfield because the planes don't need to be that big. Spin it round and then make sure that the actual terminal of the building is connected using the tendrils to the industry. Now place it down and we're gonna do the same thing over here with this industry. Make a new line and we're gonna to go to both airports, starting with the steel pickup. Now click on the depot which is built into the airport and press X to buy some vehicles. There's only one option available because we're trying to transport cargo with very small planes, which generally speaking, cargo planes are quite big, but that's fine, we'll buy this one and we'll buy a few of these. Then we can dump these onto the new line. Now this hovercraft is getting quite full and we could just add another hovercraft back to this line but let's instead upgrade the vehicle to a bigger ship. So open the vehicle menu and then the spinning arrows which is replace. We're then going to choose this one here, the Graf Zeppelin. But hang on a second, 
Big ship is incompatible with small harbour. Okay, let's fix this. Go over to your harbours, select them and then go down to configure. We are now going to press X and bulldoze this dock. And we're going to go over to passenger and select the large dock and place that down. Make sure that it's got a landing patch too. Do the same on both docks. And now we can go to our hovercraft and we can replace it with the vehicle we want. We can also do the same for passengers. So let's get a passenger station or passenger terminus station and connect it to the cities. Now connect the two together with some tracks and add a depot or reuse the one you've already got. We're now going to buy a train. So we're going to once again want something small as we're just starting out. This train here is fairly good so we'll grab this one here. Let's check the top speed of this train, it's 140 and we're going to compare this to the passenger cars. We want one to go to 140 as well. This one is not much more expensive than this one over here and it's pretty much slightly better in every regard. So we'll grab a few of these and we're going to create a new line from these two stations. We can now assign this train to the new line. We're going to now hook a bus route up to the train station so the people from the rest of the city can actually get to this train station. So go over to the road tool, select a bus slash tram stop and then place it down in various areas of the town. We want to make sure we're covering all areas of the town so hold down Y, go to data layers and then go to land use layer. Then press X to minimize and then go to road and then reselect the bus stops. We can now go place one in each area of the town and then place these bus stops down on both sides. Now go to a new line and add each of these bus stops. Do it again but this time you're going to go the opposite way around. Now you have a bus route going both ways. Go to a road depot and place one down nearby or use one you've already got. Here I'm going to use the e Citro LU version. We're going to buy three of these and this is going to go onto one of the lines. We can buy three more of these here and put them onto the other line. Or we can select one of the vehicles on the current line and go to vehicle manager. Select these vehicles here, clone vehicle here. After that, send these vehicles onto the other line. To get rid of the heads up display, hold down Y, go to data layers and then press B. And we should start seeing some people using these bus stops now. And there's another city over here we can also connect to the network. So let's go back and create another station over in this city. Connect this up with tracks. Of course, you should pay more attention than I am at constructing the train track. I've just done it quickly to demonstrate, but this obviously is not a good setup. Now we can press on one of the stations, find the line, one to the right and then press manage, and we can select the line and then add a station over at the new place. There's a little mistake here. Make sure when you add a new station, you add the middle one once again. Otherwise, the train is going to go number one, number two, number three, and then it's going to come back and skip this station and go back to number one. So make sure that you add a number four in there as well. This city also needs public transport to get people to the station. But this time, let's show you something new. We're going to do trams this time. So I've already constructed the bus stops. Go over to the tools on the road section and select the tram track tool. Once you've got this selected, hover over a road that you want to upgrade, like this one here, and it'll go blue. Press A to build the tram tracks. We're then going to go all the way around where our bus stops are to create the route. Make sure there's a nice turnaround point on the end of the line for the trams as well. Create a new line, just like before, to all of the routes, and another one going the other way around. Now as you can see here, the line isn't actually going where we want it to go. The trams are going to just kind of teleport, which is not what we want to do because it'll block the road up. So we'll go over here to the road section, and then to waypoints, and we're going to add a waypoint here and here. Now if we go back to our lines, we can add these waypoints as a checkpoint. So for example, after number three, we can add this as a station and the tram will now follow the track correctly. Do this for the other line as well. Now go to the road section once again and then back to buildings and we're going to place this time a tram depot. Now buy some trams. I like the look of the Toronto CRLV. Let's buy a few of these. And why not? We'll get some Toyama 8000s too. So I'm going to use these buttons here to select by pressing A on them and we're going to set these one to that line and then one to the other line. So now those two vehicles are split. So this train setup is great, but it's taking so long for the train to get all the way over here. There's so many people just stood around waiting on this platform, which is not what we want. So we're going to fix that by adding another train. But things are about to get treacherous because we can't add one train to a single line because they're going to just hit each other. So what we need to do is we need to double up these tracks. So go to the rails, standard tracks, and we're going to duplicate all the way along here by just going right next to the track like that and placing it down. We're then going to drag this in on a point on this side and the same on the other side as well. And make sure you add some signals. So press B, go to signals and add a signal there. If you've got quite a few trains, then make sure you do block sections as well. So you can place some on either side of the track every approximate four lengths of a train. And we'll double track the rest of this route. But now this station needs to be connected to double tracks, but we've only got a single track in the station and that's not efficient at all. So if we press B and then click on the station, we can go to configure and we're going to add some more tracks. So add a track down here 
to make it double tracks and then this is also going to need a platform so go to platforms and add a passenger platform on this side as well. Unless you plan on going to passenger buildings and adding a station building on this side as well you can go to MISC and then passenger underpass and place one of these down and now passengers can cross underneath the station and get out on the platform they want. We can now connect this track to the double tracks here. In this instance we're going to have to delete that track and plug it into this one instead. If you want to be fancy about it you can also add a platform roof. This is a diesel train so we don't actually need these catenary. If this is the same case for you go to rail and then upgrade tool and de-electrify all this track as it is costing you maintenance which you don't really need to pay at all. I'm going to just add a signal before this station that this isn't 100% necessary. I'm going to put one down here and I'm going to put one down here just in case the train is waiting we can at least have something queuing behind. I'm also going to block section this bit of track. Now going to lines, generally speaking it's going to automatically do it but it sometimes doesn't like in this instance. So to do this, find your line and we're going to figure out, so we drive on the right in this game, number one is going to go to number two and then number two it needs to be the rightmost station. Let's check it is, it is. So that means on the way back this station is going to be platform two and that should fix our problems. And now is the most fun part, we get to buy a new train, go to the depot and buy vehicles. This one looks pretty cool to me, so we'll grab that one and we're looking for 160 as the top speed. So we'll grab a few of these cars, purchase that and we're going to stick that onto the line. The American locomotive with Chinese cars, there we go. Now that means when one train's all the way over here, another train can be over here and people don't have to wait anywhere near as long, so they're more likely to take the train. Because we block sectioned out this railway, we can also go to our line and if we wanted to we could also just duplicate these two trains and we would be perfectly fine. Although we have to make sure that the capacity of the trains running is matching that of the people waiting at the stations, otherwise we're running empty trains and that's a waste of money. And those are the basics, check out this playlist for more really helpful tips and tricks.